All right, hello everyone. This is Leontes and LK404 yet again. Hey, LK404 here. And we got another Codex video. This one was taken a few weeks ago when we played at Pasadena Game Empire. And so you have Al Hazard playing purple on the left side and uh, Leontes on the right, myself, playing uh, patented Feral Blood Necromancy. Um, this is the first time I played this deck with the red starter. Um, so it's a little bit different from what I'm used to. I was playing a much different version with the uh, the green starter with the cheaper rich earth and stuff. So it was kind of uh, maybe a little bit stronger, but I'm trying the red aggro thing. So we're, we're going to get started already. Um, Al Hazard goes first. Drops uh, Worker and Harden Mox. Good. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Sure. <laughs> Hard, Harden Mox is a three gold, one one that's indestructible. And it has a little caveat that if you if you play it um, if from... You, uh, yeah. If, if if somebody if if you play a tech two you have to trash Harden Mox that's the only real weakness. So he's a nice uh, just blocker to get you through the early game. Yeah, one one indestructible is very good. If he does die, he just exhausts. No big deal. So I have to constantly get through that. And he's affected by battle suits, which is pretty deadly. So play nautical dog. Nautical dog. Nautical dog. Nautical dog. Insert meme and joke here. Yeah, I, I wish I remembered something that rhymes. Yeah. So I'm gonna get a skeleton. Um, so if he plays Nullcraft, I'm, it's just gonna get, the skeleton's just gonna die. So I put him in Scavenger just to get gold. Um, Nautical Dog has to be in Squad Lead also. Nullcraft is a uh, is a two gold one one flyer with haste. haste. So it just destroys little one ones like Skeleton and Nautical Dog and Madman. <laughs> so Al Hazard's hand um, can't really tell. A little shiny from the uh, the card gloss there. Yep. Interesting that he put Hardened Mox in resist as opposed to squad lead. It's you're gonna burn it and then also charge somehow on turn one. Yeah, I mean I guess it yeah, didn't really it matter doesn't, where doesn't it matter went. too much, yeah. Didn't really matter where it went, it was gonna do what it does. And it doesn't it doesn't benefit from scavenger or technician slots, which is another reason why a three gold blocker in the early game is a little bit like it's not as crazy as the card seems at first glance. When I first saw Hardened Mox, I was like, I'm going to play purple because this card seems super broken. There's so, the Nullcraft. So Nullcraft comes out, kills Skeleton. I get my gold back. So at least I, when I played Garth, I summoned a Skelly, and he paid for himself. So And, and Garth didn't get hit. That's the note, too, because Nullcraft probably would have hit Garth. So paying that one kind of saved you a damage, basically. Yeah, totally. So Nullcraft, two gold remaining, Hardened Mox... Um, Harden Mox is pretty much just a blocker most of the time. He's going to pay one for that, and he will start tech one most likely. Looks like it. Yeah, yep. tech one coming. Starting his tech one building. So not a lot of blockers, but Mox is, yeah. Uh, yeah it doesn't make sense to put it in scav. No, it doesn't get uh, scavenger or technician bonuses because the uh, indestructible replaces the dying. Yeah, it never actually dies. Actually can't ever die. if It, it, it only trashes if you... Uh, if you summon a tech two, and it also can't be sacrificed. So if you're playing it with some black effects like Doom Grasp, you can't use it. So um, I get a Rambaster, because I think I'm going to go for an early tech one kill here. Or get as much damage as I can on the tech one. So Garth will swing and take out the Mox. It just moves him. Um, Nautical Dog and Rambaster do five, though, and that kills the tech one, because he didn't play a blocker. Wow. He no craft is just a flyer, and so I just got an early tech one kill. Um, against a uh, purple going first... It's very important to do that um, because Steward of the Undone is a very, very dangerous card, as I'm sure everyone's talking about right now on forums. Um, and I play a Blood Rage Ogre to block because the tech one has been destroyed. Um, Stewardess is one of one of its main goals. is It's, it's a three-cost card that is a 2-3 Mystic that will bounce a tech zero unit. So if I play any really heavy tech zeros like Hardened Mox or... Uh, any three cost guy like an iron bark triant yeah if you're relying on any tech zero to block for you in the patrol zone pop that out and then you can get through yeah i haven't built my tech one yet but i mean i killed his so that's pretty good that's just red stuff so yeah um, no craft kills nautical dog i can't really stop that from happening um i'm putting my i put my tech sideways in my discard pile that way i can always just easily pick them up if i need to and change them out Oh, this is me saying, hey, I floated two gold like an idiot, and I probably should have made a tech one. So, yeah, Al Hazard lets me do that. Yeah, so. <laughs> that seems correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, notice the tech one costs two gold because he's playing multicolor. Yes. Me just putting my tokens out and stuff and setting things up. So I'm getting my gold ready for next turn, but just so I can plan my turn ahead. 
Uh, workers, um, the Neoplexus. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, which is... Uh, I see stewardesses. I see them in his hand. Yeah, but he can't play them. Yep. Let's see. Would he be able... Yeah, he. Uh, if, if he had the stewardess, he'd be able to get through and kill Garth. But it looks like no dice on this turn. Okay, changes out the worker. And we'll play a and Neo and a... Neoplexus and Fading Argonaut. Fading Argonaut, so... So, two cost for a 2-3, two, two cost for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Argonaut is almost strictly better than the Neoplexus because Fading 3 is almost not a drawback in the amount of time that it stays out, it'll probably die anyway. But, yeah, totally. But, it's rare that it dies from Fading. But yeah, Neoplexus, Neoplexus is still good because you always, like, you just need blockers. Yep. That's what I was saying earlier um, when we were playing casuals yesterday about having cards that kind of perform similar functions. It's nice to have, like, if you had two Fading Argonauts, that'd be crazy, right? But Fading Argonaut plus Neoplexus is much more fair. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a worse version. But notably, it doesn't have the... It um, gets buffed by Midori. Yeah, it gets buffed by Midori, right? That's, that's what I was going to say, because it has no abilities. All right, so here comes my first tech one. It's a Centaur. I like to build Centaurs in this multicolor because I'm trying to build up to tech two blood. Um, I need a frontline wall. Blood is usually really all in and likes to play a lot of uh, units that just exhaust the second they come in or they just die right when they come in. So I'm going to play centaurs to build a front line, and that's my main use of tech one. Maybe against purple, I will be doing different, or against purple, I'm doing this strategy, but I might be using more calamandra centric stuff. Maybe I'll use Merkwood allies against red. Maybe, you know, I have, I have options in this deck. Although it is interesting because you're starting with the red starter deck, so... Calamandra and Garth being your uh, your lead heroes is a little odd. But. Yeah, no, I, I use Garth and Drac a yeah. lot. Early tower. Yeah, early tower here. This is to um, kill the Nullcraft and to make the math bad for his dudes. So um, had to trade uh, two units to get rid of the uh, yeah the four HP Argonaut. Yeah, but hey, you gotta do it sometimes. Yeah, I think he got his two gold worth out of that. And now with the tower, that means that um, the Centaur. Does, just deals a lot of damage. I mean, right now, it's it's going to make sure that Nullcraft dies if it attacks Garth. Um, it doesn't really affect Mox whatsoever. And that, that's pretty much it. It's just an anti-Nullcraft play. I do have um, Careless Musketeer in the starter deck to deal with Nullcraft. It's very hard to get that to activate after turn one because it's a 2-1. So I have to put it in squad lead, and if Purple and has... to survive. Yeah, if Purple has any board, he's going to just kill it. And so it's kind of a turn one player like a never play. And I, I couldn't play it, so Tower is one of my only ways of dealing with Nullcraft. You have to deal with these little flyers, guys. If you play against White and you see Bird's Nest, you have to deal with those. Don't let them just sit there, because they will win the game for White, and Nullcraft will win the game for Purple as well, in my opinion. And because you're playing Drac and or because you're playing Garth and not Drac, you uh, like Scorch is for sure off the table. You... Yeah, it's four gold for yeah, Scorch. Yeah, there's, there's no way you pay that. I was workered so early, I think. Yep. <laughs> I see a Pillage still in your hand, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, pillage is always nice. When when you when you see an opportunity to pillage, you just do it. Free base damage is never bad, and you know if people are floating gold against you, then they're not playing cards, and if you can remove that even further, it's it's awesome. Okay, so let's see if we can get some bad maths here. I don't have any tech zeros on the board, meaning stewardess's value is greatly limited. Um, another aspect of trading with my my um, what was it? Not nautical dog. It was. Was it Nautical Dog and Rambaster? No, um, it was a Blood Rage Ogre. And a yeah, Rambaster. Blood Rage Ogre. Yeah, and so that's that's fine. I'm trying to trade up. So here comes the Sentry. Sentry. Sentry has an ability. It's Spark Shot and Anti Air, right? Yeah, and it's Spark a, Shot, Anti Air, and it prevents one ability damage. Yeah, it prevents the first ability damage dealt to one of your patrollers. So against my deck, because I use Crash Bomber on occasion, it's pretty good. Um, it just it stops that that extra one attack that Crash Bomber can do. Um, I think it does interact with overpower the same way. I think it's, I think overpower is, well, it's combat damage, right? Yeah, overpower is combat damage. It's not ability damage, so. I don't believe so, but I okay. think spark shot is. Spark shot is, yes. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a good, it's just a good two cost, three, three. Um, tech two right now. Wow, just going straight to tech two and, uh, hasn't played a hero all game. Yeah, so this one, what does he go? We'll see what he does. The uh, the black and white sentry. Yeah, the print and play sentry. Yep. So it just blocks up. I mean, purple has some of the best stalling mechanics in the game. And you're 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 rocking Garth and not uh, not normal uh, 
mono green, and so you can't dino size that centaur. So centaur most likely is not going to get a double kill. No, um, centaur's main value for me in this deck is I get to use frenzy. Okay. Um, with uh, mid band drag, and if I can play centaurs from hand with max band drag, they're pretty crazy because they're just four attack overpower guys that come out hasted. Um, so that's like one of the main ways I use them. But also, I'm just using the uh, the centaurs as a five HP wall. Yep, using it just to block up until you can get to blood. Yeah, and then if I can get rid of the null craft, then skeletons become more valuable too. And he didn't attack, so the towers tower did its job really. It prevented it prevented from swinging on me, and that's really what I wanted. Centaur number two comes out, followed by a bone collector. So I'm just loading up on potential token based tech morning. Oh, do I not do that? Hmm. Instead, for, yeah, oh, okay, I catch up because I see him doing it. I'm like, you know what? I gotta do it too. Even though bone collector's in my hand, I'd rather play a centaur and making a skeleton. Make a skeleton. So, hey, no craft kills a skeleton. You get a card out of it. That's pretty. I, good. I get a card or a gold. I figured I do. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Um, but there's also tower, so skeleton swings back basically, and I go blood. Yeah, I, I forget he didn't put his thing. Maybe I ask him now what he's gonna do. And I can't remember. I think he may go. He may go present this game. Seems right. He had stewardesses early. I still have no tech tech zeros outside of that skeleton though. So that's part of what I try to do against purple is minimize my use of those. Um, sometimes I like to get a hero's hall to just invest in heroes instead so that the bouncing is not as bad and I make him tech origin story or I make him tech undo because that's just easier um, counterplay from my side. It's just to, to not have as many tech zero options. No, no blood rage ogres that are desperately blocking for me. I just get the centaurs out. Although Stewardess of the Undone and uh, Forgotten Fighter both sort of make it that if you have a three cost tech zero unit in your deck, you probably don't play it against purple. Yeah, you shouldn't play it. Yeah. Especially if it's like Ironbark Treant, which yep. is like that that thing's job is to, to hold out everything and And nope, you uh <laughs> Text message. <laughs> yeah. Stewardess the Undone, pay two and uh make you lose your three gold that you spent. Phone is phone is on silent now. Sorry guys. All right, so Alhan's trying to figure out what to do here. I see three cost units over there. It's, maybe his hand is double stewardess. Yeah, but I'm just trying to make it hard to play, and he is in a position where he can play a battle suits and get some value out of it. So if you bounce the skeleton, you don't get the gold, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it just go. It just fizzles. Doesn't actually die. Um, summons Prin. First hero of all game. Yeah, I noticed purple does that. They have a lot of card draw and things, and they have just guys that persist on the board. There's and temple research. Temple research, yep. Summon Prin, and then you immediately get more than three time runes and draw two. Yeah. Pretty cool synergy. Yep. I joked once that if Battle Suits was too strong, that it should have fading runes on it. But then I realized what that would potentially do to uh, to purple early game. It might yep. actually be really crazy because then Battle Suits like, oh, I'll pay two to draw some cards. Try Cycloid. Try Cycloid out. Yeah, Temple Research almost never draws one. Pretty much never draws never, one. Never, never. Yeah. So Tricycloid is a 3-3 three, three for 5. Very expensive unit. But it comes with 3 plus 1 plus 1s that are... Like, those those little... Those time runes or whatever those runes are, those are, what, shot runes or something? No, they are time runes. They're time runes. Okay, because Tinkerer and Seer can add more. Yep. And okay. you can spend them to deal 1 damage to any unit hero or building. So yeah. He can spend 2 of those runes and kill, uh, kill Garth right now. What's he doing? Or is he taking it back? Oh, yeah. He wants to attack with the monks first. That's one thing you should always do, guys. Make sure you attack with your monks before, before you, uh, you play the tech two. Yeah, because uh, that's fine. That's fine. He gets he pings off the one damage off the centaur. So centaur yep. one has only four health now. Takes the armor off of the centaur. Yep. Sentry will shoot and spark shot one over and deal real, three real damage to the, the first centaur and die. The Nullcraft can swing. Um, it'll die too. So my guess is two runes to Garth, one rune to squad lead. So it pings one. Huh. And then I think he has to, yeah. Nullcraft in. Tower kills uh, the uh, Yep. The Nullcraft. Neoplexus does the other two there. Okay. Okay, okay. And then he will ping ping and kill Garth, maybe? 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Sounds right. Get two levels on Prin. Yep. And he made complete tech board two. clear. Yeah, it made it to tech two before me. Tricycloid, very dangerous uh, for that reason alone. And I had I had two centaurs out there. No battle suits in play, just solid purple value plays. He puts his last gold into uh, Prin because why not? I'm red. Maybe I got a pillage. I think that puts Prin at mid band though. Does it actually? I, I, so I think that actually does buff the stats. Okay. Maybe not. And what does Prin's mid band do? Is that the dice from fading thing? Or yeah, is that... dice from fading. Okay. Although she doesn't have any way to spend fading runes until uh, her so max, max band. band. Yeah. Okay, so he goes down to three cards for this. But discard five. Oh yeah, no, he's fine. He just played tricycling only. Cycling. So purple in, in good position still. Has the first tech two out. Um, then uh, I'm kind of on the back foot, but maybe I have my stuff now. Uh, Garth is dead. One of the one of the main tricks that I use in this deck is max banding Garth to bring Crash Barrows in, which is extremely dirty. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, that was his. Yeah, that was his discard. I don't believe he shuffled. Yeah, no, he. Um, this might be a turn where he made a mistake with his. Uh, the way he did his draw, like he explains it to me. I can't remember what happened. Yeah, but he, he, there was a thing that happened, but he, we work it out. Yeah, he discarded and then he put his whole discard into his draw pile and didn't. Uh, and then drew, yeah. And then didn't shuffle. Yeah, I forget how it worked, but. So his hand is exactly what he discarded, which is. Uh, could be <laughs> good or bad, depending. Uh, yeah, because I, th I think he has two stewardess of the, of the undones again. Mm hmm. Let's see, I bring out Drac, play a Blood Rage. Now I have to decide. Yeah, an Uncle Dog. With that, with the dead. That's, that's a lot of tech zeros, though. Yeah, with the dead Nullcraft, though, I'm just trying to uh, chump out with the 1-1s. One yeah, so what are you looking to do with Drac there? Um, Drac, I'm looking to wait until I have Garth. That's more so. <laughs> um, I was going to say, because... Um, I mean, maybe yeah. uh, per, uh, present doesn't doesn't seem to have things that are super great for kidnapping. I mean, I guess uh, Hyperion, but yeah, totally. Hyperion's gonna be attacking your face, so yeah. Stewardess. Okay, so we're gonna lose a Blood Rage Ogre. Returns to hand, and just have nautical dog and skeleton. But hey, I'll draw cards and get gold, hopefully. The uh, tricycloid's only a three three, so I guess all he has for attacking now is just print and the tricycloid. Uh, looks like he has another tricycloid in hand, so he could play it and clear out the rest of the patrol zone. Yeah, it's there gonna get it bad is. fast. Yeah, it's gonna get bad real fast. Three more. Uh, yeah, tricycloid three three that comes with ember sparks. Oh yeah, it's super great. So I get a gold in the card. I'm okay with that. I have a lot of gold now. And with um, with Garth being summonable, that means I can do a, a quick tutor on Crash Barrow next turn as long as my Tech 2 survives, which is maybe not likely. Also note that all heroes almost start level... Uh, almost all heroes start at level 1 with 3 health, and so you can play a Tricycloid and almost always kill a level 1 hero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 1 to the Tech, one, tech 2, and those 2 kill my Tech 2... And my base takes some damage. Why three? Oh no, yeah, he he had. Did Prin deal four to my tech two? Maybe I did that wrong. But they should all be hurt though. I have tower up. Oh yeah, they all should take a damage. Yeah. Let's see if that factors in. Um, but yeah, one damage on. The back, the back tricycloid and the prin. So I still have Garth out, or not Garth, but uh, Drac. So that means I can max band and play a hasted guy immediately if I want to. Or um, the, the way that I do tech decisions with this deck is I go Crash Barrow and Shoddy Glider, one of each, so that when I the next tech I'll do Crash Barrow Shoddy Glider again. I won't do like both of one or the other. It's so that I can um, I can bring in. Garth the turn that I want to and then get a fast crash barrow. So here I play I, I max band my um my Drac. 
then... so that I can play a hasted thing, and it's probably going to be a centaur. Seems to be all you can play at this point because you don't have the tech two. Yeah. So I can't really do the Garth trick. So Centaur does four damage because of the the frenzy. So he's gonna kill Tricycloid and he'll live. No overpower damage though. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Spiritus is a two three. And that Tricycloid cycles again, so if he can pay another five and deal another three. Yeah, you can get him back. Play a Crash Bomber. Just a decent blocker. It's a one, one gold, two, two. Yep. And when he dies, he deals another damage. Yep. If he dies on my turn, I can hit a building or a patroller. If he dies on my opponent's turn, their base takes one. Um, and with the Drac Max Band, I really like Crash Bombers because, yeah, so he can deal three um, and kill that. Drac takes two from killing the Stewardess. It's fine. And then uh, I just have to worry about tricycloid but i shouldn't have to i play charge on that yeah so that's going to kill the back tricycloid um and take one to the base because the uh the cool thing about oh wow no blockers yeah it's fine <laughs> i think i'm okay <laughs> this is this is red things this is what red has to do sometimes i'm playing red starter so i feel like red and i'm playing drag so just gotta all in a little bit draw five cards let's try to get to some of those tech twos if I can protect Tech 2 for a turn, then I can bring out Garth and immediately bring Crash Barrows in and start just wrecking the patrol zone. Yeah, how much does it do? It, it costs 9 to do that from nothing. So, and you're going to get... Uh, yeah, no, Garth you, Max Band is 7. Yeah, 7 plus you... Oh, so it costs 8 from yeah, nothing. Yeah, 8 gold. Yeah. 8 gold from nothing and you get nine uh, 9 gold at the start of your turn. Yeah, so I can still work her and do that play. Yep. And still have a centaur. But anyway, what I was going to say about Crash Bomber, um, it's only one gold, and when you have a max band Drac and you play the, uh, you play him from hand, he has haste, so he can run into the squad lead or something, and he deals three with that, but then he probably dies, and then he can deal one more. So it's almost like you paid one to get four damage to the patrol zone. It's very, very strong. But I played charge, so he had like plus two attack and then died, and it was... Temporal research. All kinds of stuff. Draw two. Yep. So that print should have one damage on her. I don't know if it matters um, over the course of the game. Uh, Maybe he that, levels her up at some point. That is incorrect. Then... He does not. He he can't actually redraw the uh, the temporal research from its own draw. Okay. Because it's still on the board until it resolves, right? Yep. Okay. Keep that in mind. I wonder if he gets a double temporal research here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rulings. Yep. That's okay. Yeah, uh, Sermon will be releasing that FAQ really soon. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't draw it again. That's cool. That's good. <laughs> that's all that matters. Although he did draw Hyperion. Hyperion, yeah. I think that's going to get played right now. Yeah. But no no battle suits, so he wasn't able to get that out early. Hyperion, a 4-5 that when it attacks, it draws a card, and it has haste. And so it almost always hits the table, attacks, draws a card, and so doesn't have a card cost, basically. And if it can swing twice, maybe it kills two things, draws two cards. That's where it gets really scary. But the real thing that I think makes Hyperion good is that it benefits from battle suits. I, I don't think the card's that strong outside of having five attack on haste, because five attack is like five times as good as four attack in this game. It means you can kill pretty much any max band hero that isn't Rook. It means you can kill a tech building. Yep. It means that you can just bust through four HP squad leads. It's just, it's really, really high damage number. So four here means he has to attack with both Prin and Hyperion in order to... Uh, um, he just drew a card, didn't attack yet, but uh, I, we know he's going to attack. Yeah, and I think he drew Temple Research, so... Oh, <laughs> but, no, that should be in discard. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and he has two gold to play it too, so... Well, I think he's probably better off playing a, a two gold thing on okay, the board. Okay, so he kills Drac. Kills Drac, takes three. So that means my tech two is going to survive. Oh, takes four. Takes four because of the tower. Got it. And Max Band Drac does have three attack. So yeah, he's better off playing uh, playing something on the board. Yeah, and two gold. Yeah, he doesn't need to draw more cards now. That's kind of pointless. Centaur surviving with one HP is really great because he basically has four attack even when exhausted because that tower is still there. So I think Prin's max ban, does she have four or five health? Maybe five, right? Maybe. Um, yeah, the question is, will she survive killing Centaur? Well, she's mid ban, so clearly... Oh, no craft. Oh, no craft, dirty. And then no craft dies to the tower. That's much better. That's very good, yeah. 
And now Prin can still attack and get her, her rune back. So if he's not tracking his time runes, um, it's because most of the time he's planning on, on attacking with Prin. Yeah, Prin, uh, it doesn't look like it from here, but I, I think Prin should be at level 5 because Drac died. Right, right. Or uh, or 6 even if he paid the 1 to level her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, empty board and Hyperion is looking pretty good. But Yep, yep. Hyperion has, what, four damage on her, so she's got one hit point left. Yep. That's enough. That's a madman away. I did draw five cards, and I do get a free Crash Barrow if I want it, so i probably do that. If I have the madman, I'm in a really good position, because then I can just play Crash Barrow. Well, Crash Barrow will, will probably overpower to Hyperion, and I'm fine. Crash Bearer is 6 2. 6 2, Overpower Ephemeral for 3. Yep. Blood Tech 2 unit, very strong. If I have Shoddy Glider, I can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's, too. Like, uh, it's like sharks if the uh, damage spread was always exactly what you needed it to be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think there I ask how much, how much health that your squad lead has, which is a question that Blood asks all the time. Because <laughs> you're doing overpower math. Yep. And trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to bust through here. So I probably play a, if I have a glider, I play that. It's like a super madman. It's Shoddy basically glider. a glider on, on like crazy. Shoddy glider and uh, max band. Yep, and in comes Crash Barrow. So, one other way I, I considered building this deck was if I could find a way to use the black starter. I'd want to do something ridiculous like Garth with uh, Crash Barrow. They're doing the same play, but then use Graveyard, and constantly replay Re my my Crash Barrows yep. from Graveyard until you kill the Graveyard, and just. That's just too much damage. Every turn, take <laughs> take six for three gold. Not bad. Shotty Glider kills the Hyperion. So I think I didn't. I wanted to overpower to uh, a building or something. Yeah. So maybe less efficient. Let's see how much overpower damage does it deal? Hard to tell with the D six. Oh, it only deals one. So. So that yeah, was misplay. Yeah. Would have been better to just Over, splash the one. Overpower the Hyperion. Yep. Overpower the Hyperion. Shot a glider and a tech two. Yep. So misplays there. Okay. So then Drac will reactivate Garth's squad leads. Yep. No um, gold left to make a skeleton, so you just have to squad lead with Drac himself. No problem. Purple has no board, and Drac has. Four health at max, right? So he can die to a uh, Hyperion if he has battle suits. Yeah, he can die to Hyperion battle suits or uh, Hyperion Nullcraft. But yeah, Null yeah. we just saw Nullcraft go away. Mm -hmm. Geiger out. Geiger. <laughs> what would I want to grab there? Probably grab Blood Bladders or something. So possibly Hyperion and Blink. Um, but I don't think there's enough. Uh, no, there might. He does have enough gold. He does have enough gold. Yeah, Geiger's max band is only four gold away after playing him. Yep. Oh no, he spent like that two was not two extra gold that he had. It was that was two gold to play Geiger. Two gold to play Geiger. Yeah, we're at, we're at nine gold right now. Yeah, with with two more gold. Oh, Hyperion battle suits had it. Yeah. I even called it. I'm like, well, if he has Hyperion battle suits, I'm dead. So I see it drop. I just grab my Garth immediately. Draws a card and. Hyperion takes four again. So the tower is putting Hyperion within range of getting killed by things more feasibly, by like my 1-1 one, one charge units and stuff. Um, so that's that's a good that I have the extra damage going in on defense. So he doesn't patrol Geiger? He probably does. Maybe not. I mean, Crash Barrel only does his damage. He only overpowers if he hits a patroller. So that's one that's one way you can deal with overpower a little bit. Is, is it, by not patrolling. By not anything. patrolling, yeah. <laughs> and it seems ridiculous, but... It's true. If he plays Geiger and squad lead, then I'm just going to crash barrel through through Geiger and kill Hyperion. If he doesn't squad lead or, or put it in patrol at all, have I have to make, to make a, a decision. Yeah. And I only get to kill one thing. So it's not that Overpower gets to hit Geiger and splash one to Hyperion. I just don't get that decision. But he does it anyway. And I wonder if I get to kill through that. Because um, I can bring out Drac and get Frenzy and play Crash Bombers and just do a bunch of cheap stuff. And by cheap, I mean gold cheap. Crash barrel? So we're going to get to see it happen. Crash Barrel Glider. Yep. That's why I stagger that. I don't like to do them both. I, I like to do Barrel Glider, Barrel Glider in that order for my two techs. 
so that I can play them both the same turn twice. A lot of times that evens out your draws, so that way you'll draw one of each, and then you'll draw one of each, and then you'll get a reshuffle after which, you know, you yeah. don't know what happens. Yeah, and it makes but... it four gold for the play instead of two gold one time and six gold another. It gives you more gold versatility. I summon Dractus to get levels. So the Crash Barrow hits him for six. It's going to bounce a probably bounce a damage to Hyperion this time, doing the right play. Um, I don't think Geiger kills the, the Barrow yet. No, he does. He does too. Um... And then Glider... I think Drac needs one more level. Yeah, to... Drac, Drac makes Glider four damage, and then that's yeah, that's what lets me kill yep, the you, Tech you Two. You pay the one gold, give him the extra level, and then let him destroy it. Yep. So Tech Two down, and now Purple on the back foot. Hopefully I have... uh, Geiger gets taken out of the discard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, once Geiger's lost, you can't get him back. Or can you? So then I have a dead Crash Barrow, don't I? So next turn, if uh, if I need to, I can just grab another one. Just keep paying uh, eight gold for Crash Barrows from Discard Pile, and they do lots of damage now because I have Drac, and I can play multiple Hasted units. Two gold for um, for Drac out. I have ten gold, so yeah, a, a total legit play is max ban Drac and do other things. Yeah, and this is this is looking really bad. So Sentry comes out. Sentry comes out. So they'll block the next two damage that, that comes to patrollers. So Crash Bomber won't get his cool effect of splashing damage to a patroller, but that means I just run it into the sentry and I hit a building instead. Which I think I'm okay with doing. Yeah, destroying the tech two is pretty big there. Yeah, I mean, there he goes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, Al Hazard taught me. So this is um, this is game three of the set that we played. He, um, I'm gonna give him credit. He absolutely decimated me games one and two. And uh, he told me that game, those first two games, that this game is about destroying tech buildings. It's about eliminating options for your opponent so that their hand, their draws are dead. And uh, I played green a lot before I started playing multis and stuff. And I was always about, no, no, I'll just build up a big board and then one-shot your base and not care about your techs. But I'm learning a lot from, from his play and from playing red more that destroying tech buildings at the right time is extremely valuable. And Because the first two games, he did stewardess plays that took out my... Uh, my squad leads, and then you just put pressure on my tech buildings instead of my heroes. And I was like, well, that's interesting. But he was he killed tech one, and all I had was tech zero, and then Stewardess of the Undone just did tons of work. So, And then he got to Hyperion before I could, because I couldn't even build my tech two, because my tech one was dead. So um, I learned a lot from those situations. So let's see, I have Crash Barrow in hand. That's seven damage because of the mid-band drac. Um... I may resequence this turn if I decide I want to play uh, another guy from hand. Because Drax Max Band is the first unit you play on the turn has haste. And Crash Bearer already has haste, so that's a little bit of a waste. Yeah, so... Okay. So does that get reordered and uh, Centaur gains haste? I think maybe. Yes, so I think I, I show that. Yeah, I do that. I don't... Yeah, I just I explain it as I go. Yep. Crash Barrow so, comes out later. and yeah. So Max Drac, first thing you play gets haste. Centaur gets haste. Then play the Crash Barrow. Yes. Then I can even get a Skeleton to block with. Hooray. So I have a Centaur with four attack, but I need to... You're doing the blood thing. You don't need to block. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you do. I mean, it's purple. You got Hyperions. I gotta, if yep. I can't kill that Tech 2, I got to have something in the way. Otherwise, I lose my Tech 2 and I can't do more Crash Barrows. That's like the big deal here. Um, so Drax going to swing at the centaur. Uh, sentry. Or sorry, the sentry, yes. Which I think he only took two and should take three. Yeah, takes three. Because of battle suits? No. No, because sentry is a 3-2. It's a 3-2? It's a 3-2. Oh my goodness, that's even better than I thought it was. So then, I think Crash Barrow can kill the other sentry and then splash a damage however he pleases. I think that play makes the most sense. Uh, he would have to splash to Veer. He can splash to a building. Uh, no, he can't. You have two patrollers. He has to hit another thing he could hit. Oh, no, so, no. Crash so Barrow, no. Uh, sorry, Crash Bomber. Oh, Crash Bomber, there we go. Can splash one damage to Tech 1 or there Tech 2. Yeah, Crash Bomber, sorry. Yeah, Crash Bomber is going to hit <laughs> the, uh, the... I think I do one damage to the Tech 2 because there's a way to kill both Tech buildings here. Because Centaur does, yeah, his one damage is going to go to tech two, putting it to four. Centaur does four damage right now, so Crash Barrow hits him for two, bounces five 
to the tech one. Do I do that wrong? I'm seeing it now, but I was wrong before. Yeah, I screwed that up. So yeah, I had seven damage on Crash Barrow. That would do. That would do enough overpower that you could destroy the tech one. Yeah, tech one. And then Centaur doing four would kill tech two. So I, I screwed up there. I could have killed both tech buildings. And then Crash Barrow is going to die, and I do not have a max man Garth yet, which means that. Oh, I have to cycle now though, don't I? No, I don't. So here comes oh. Crash Barrow next turn again. It's a couple more goals. Um, I don't build a skeleton though. <laughs> so Drax max man ability is play from hand, so you can't like bring in an octopus. Yeah. And have him have so this was this was scoop for uh for him, and I was saying yeah, next turn I was gonna have another Crash Barrow. Um. So he was just we're just kind of cleaning up at this point. So that was okay. That's so I I got destroyed okay. game one and two, and then now we're gonna go to uh, game four. I, I I made this adaptation um, that I did this time, and I ended up winning game four. But now we're gonna go to game five. Um, after this video, we're gonna see one more video, um, and we'll see who wins the set ultimately in a best of five. Yep. So both players have had time to adapt and figure out what the, each other's doing and. It'll be in a really interesting game. Yeah, so at some point, if there's enough uh, requests for it, um, we might just upload the entire two-hour video of all five matches so you guys can watch it from start to finish. Um, but we figured we'd just highlight games three and five um, because they were the most action-packed and had the most adaptation to them. Because, um, yeah, I got annihilated games one and two. And this <laughs> is, like, my first, like, fighting chance that I had against Alhazard's Purple, which is very, very aggressive and very strong. And I learned a lot from first two games. Yeah, blowouts don't always make for great commentary. No, no, no. And plus, <laughs> we're still learning. So yep. um, I'm sure that, you know, blowouts will be less frequent once I have better counterplay to certain things. Um, especially with a multicolor deck that I'm kind of floundering around a little bit with. Like, the red starter is completely new to me in terms of playing this. I usually run green. Um, and I'm thinking about doing black too. So that, that's one of the hard parts about multicolor is not only do you have to decide what you're going to even put in there, but hey, now you have three choice, two to three choices between which starters you're going to use. And that can be a complex decision in and of itself. Definitely. So um, that was game three. So now it's Al Hazard two and Leontes one. Um, and then I win game four, making it 2-2. Two, two. So stay tuned for the next video of game five to see who wins this set at Game Empire in Pasadena. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.